to Behind the Shadows. My name is Susan Finelli, and I am your host and author of Behind the Shadows, a program where we go behind the shadows of what meets the eye. This evening, we will be going behind the shadows of the Childhood Cancer Society, and our guest tonight is Tommy Head. Tommy is a remarkable young man who overcame his own childhood illness and founded the uh, organization, and I am going to let Tommy tell you about the organization and about his own journey. Tommy, welcome to Behind the Shadows. Thank you so much for having me, Susan. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you here tonight. Why don't we start by telling us a little bit about the Childhood Cancer Society? Sure. Well, uh, Childhood Cancer Society is a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to helping families struggling with childhood cancer. Um, that can mean the type of help we provide can be anything from helping with medical expenses to uh, buying gifts for kids starting or completing treatment. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me, I know you, you had a difficult journey yourself uh, mm -hmm. when you were, I don't know if it started when you were a toddler. Uh, when I was uh, seven years old, seven? They, uh, they diagnosed me with ITP, mm -hmm. which is idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpa. And what is that? It's, uh, <laughs> basically an unknown reason for the platelet count to drop, but it, uh, that's a similar symptom to leukemia. So I was evaluated for leukemia, the bone marrow biopsy, all that, and mm -hmm. uh, they concluded that I didn't have leukemia, but that I had ITP which is an untreatable uh, ailment, but that uh, eventually I did recover. Well, you look like the picture of health. I mean, <laughs> Thank you. What, what was your treatment? Uh, there was no treatment, uh, just basically uh, vitamins and uh, week weekly blood work. Mm -hmm. I would uh, get my blood checked mm -hmm. uh, two or three times a week. Right. Um, and at seven years old, I was really involved with a lot of sports. I liked mm -hmm. uh, soccer and mm -hmm. uh, tennis and I had to my sports unfortunately I had to take a step back mm -hmm. due to the uh, the bruising and the ailment right but um, I did find myself interested in acting mm -hmm. and uh, when I was 12 years old I uh, my completely count started to recover and uh, I found myself picked up with an acting management company and I used the money that I earned from my first couple of commercials mm -hmm. to uh, to make a donation to a not to Tomorrow's Children in mm -hmm. Hackensack, New Jersey. Right. Uh, we donated a bunch of video game systems yeah. and uh, video games to the kids there, and uh, I really, I really liked the feeling. And when I got older, I wanted to uh, to make a larger impact. And uh, when I was about 16, it was the first time I had heard the term 501c3. Right. Uh, around that time, uh, there was the uh, tsunami in the Indian Ocean, mm -hmm. and I remember exactly where I was. I was with, on vacation with my family, right. and uh, we were looking. Uh, we were watching the news and we heard, you know, 501c3 is like the Red Cross mm -hmm. popping up. And so I wanted to see what distinguished, uh, what, what the difference was between mm -hmm. a uh, 501c3 and other nonprofits. Right. And I found out about the tax exemption. Mm -hmm. And so when we got, when we went home, I, uh, I looked into what was necessary, the necessary steps, talked mm -hmm. to an accountant and a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And um, we submitted three names and uh, we got Childhood Cancer Society. Was that your first pick? That was our first pick. Good yes. for you. Yes, it was. Now, when you were going through your own diagnosis and, and treatment and, and recovery, I, you know, I understand from you that you had uh, very caring parents. Mm -hmm. And what did you see that made you say, wait a minute, there are children out there that need help? Well, when uh, when I used to go for my weekly blood work, um, I would visit some of the, I would see some of the other kids who, who did have cancer, mm -hmm. and uh, you know you would see uh, just images that stick out are you know sons with no hair, you know five six years old, right. and uh, their father also shaving their head and mm -hmm. kind of like for yeah. the for the child, and that kind of seeing that at such a young age really influenced my perspective going forward. You know, you, sometimes you think you have problems, you know, you're having a bad day, and then that's right. You really come down to seeing what a real problem is. That's right, yeah. And, and so I really, I felt very compelled to help and um, when I was finally in a position to do so, I thought, it, I, I felt it almost feels like a calling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, do you still have to be evaluated and watched or are you clear? I uh, I have had a regular plate platelet count since I was 13, so mm -hmm. now I'm 23. I've been in the clear for 10 years. That's wonderful, and, wonderful. Uh, yeah, hopefully. Keep our fingers crossed. Well, did you ever need a platelet transfusion? No, no? I was right. I was straddling the uh, the critical level, mm -hmm. and it never got to the point. My hematologist never said that That's I would wonderful. need the transfusion. He mm -hmm. said, you know, if it comes to that, we'll we'll move forward. But uh, until that point, let's uh, mm -hmm. let's just 
proceed. Well, you know, it's interesting because my my cousin's son, when he he's 16 now, when he was, I think, 18 months, he was diagnosed with ATP, ITP. Oh. No one had ever heard of it. Yeah. You know, and, you know, we all ran to our doctors to see if we can donate platelets because they were concerned. But he was lucky that he never needed the transfusion. He went every week for his blood test mm -hmm. uh, and he outgrew it. He was young exactly. and they said, you know, he would, he's at an age where it will either get very serious mm -hmm. or he'll outgrew it. And that's scary news to get. Of course, you mm -hmm. know, and, and he, we were very lucky that, uh, that he did out, outgrow it. Uh, so how do, how do you find the families that need, need you, need okay. your support? Well, up until very recently, we received our, uh, our donation requests uh, solely through uh, hospitals. So we work with three main hospitals, uh, New York Presbyterian Cancer Institute of New Jersey and uh, St. Joseph's Children's Hospital in Patterson, New Jersey. We uh, work with the social workers there who send us requests uh, for different needs, whether it be for medical expenses or they have a kid who's having a bad day mm -hmm. or uh, someone who's got a birthday coming up or we'll buy uh, you know wigs for kids mm -hmm. who uh, like girls who are having uh, quinceañeras or mm -hmm. things like that and they lose their hair so it's a nice it's a nice to be able to have their their hair on a, on such a special day or, sure. um, or just even laptops for kids who are not going to be able to see really any of their friends for like two months at a time a way for them isolation. to get out exactly yeah. yeah a way for them to get out and uh, uh -huh. and kind of get into the virtual world so to speak so do you uh, provide transportation to families to visit if the child happens to be in a uh, well sure actually right now we're paying for um, I can't get into any names obviously no, for HIPAA course. but we mm -hmm. have uh, a family out in Kansas that it, their doctor their, their child mm -hmm. was born on April 6th and has uh, retinoblastoma which is cancer of the eye oh, gee. and we're paying for their flight to come to visit their doctor mm -hmm. in Philadelphia two trips over the summer as well as putting them up in a uh, in a mm -hmm. hotel as well, mm -hmm. so that they can be with their infant. Does the uh, the St. Jude Hospital uh, do they know about you, or do you have any connection with them? No, we don't have any affiliation with any larger um, cancer institutions or nonprofit mm -hmm. organizations. But um, we one of the unique things about our organization is that we are 100% volunteer, meaning there are no salaries paid. Everyone who works with me um, donates their time, mm -hmm. and uh, we have done some work with uh, with um, uh, not not gift of life but rather uh, uh, draw a blank oh okay yeah. when you when it comes back to you you know just pop in with it oh smile forever <laughs> smile foundation for, I'm okay. sorry yeah, that's with, okay uh, with Pat Canelli yeah. he's, uh, uh -huh. he's a great guy uh, mm -hmm. I met him a long time ago he came to my first charity dinner when I was a junior right. in, uh, in high school and mm -hmm. we uh, we raised a lot of money that night 25,000 that's a lot of money yeah it's a lot of money I mean you're kind of an up upstart organization right. with really no big you know promoters to get you out there the way I understand it Right. right, we do all our own promoting. Mm -hmm. um, we were part of a Showtime Network competition mm -hmm. in uh, January called uh, The Walk of Shameless. <laughs> I'm not sure if you saw any of my videos. Uh, <laughs> it was uh, basically uh, it was a four-day walkathon competition where we would walk on the treadmill mm -hmm. for uh, 12 hours a day between myself and two other teammates. Wow. And uh, at the end, there was also a voting element on right. Twitter and yes. uh, through text message. And although we didn't win, we did. Uh, we were a very strong competitor. We reached over 40 million people on Twitter. Twitter. That's wonderful. Yeah. Now, in this uh, economic climate, I'm assuming that you're having uh, difficulty keeping yourself afloat. I mean, what, you know, is that hurting you? Sure. Well, uh, in 2008 uh, is when I really it was when I started uh, my college term at uh, mm -hmm. NMYU. Right. And so between you know the new academic pressures mm -hmm. as well as uh, just trying to find myself, uh, we end the recession. Of course, mm -hmm. donations suffered between 2008 and 2010, mm -hmm. but. Uh, Starting in 2011, things started to pick up. We were uh, we we have started kind of a program through uh, my time here in New York uh, called Charity Ragers, mm -hmm. which are just like uh, they're parties, but uh, all of the proceeds are donated to Child and Cancer Society. That, that that's that's wonderful. Now, what do volunteers do for you? So volunteers, I get a lot of different types of uh, of volunteers. Um, 
generally they help me in ways that are specific to their particular talents. So mm -hmm. um, I have a I have one uh, volunteer who's a, my chief fundraising officer, Adam right. Butterfield. He uh, he helps me with fundraising, of mm -hmm. course, and then uh, also there's Chelsea Cohen, who's my chief, um, who's kind of the director of the Good Vibes line. Right. And that's our T-shirts right here. Oh, that's a wonderful. Why don't you hold it up? Yeah, let me uh, see if I can open it yeah, up. Yeah, hold it. I know you have one on, but here we go. Chelsea cool. designed these. They Wonderful. Are the freshest t-shirts. They are. Cool. All Those the proceeds cool. go to children with cancer. Yes. And so 100% of the proceeds. All donated. All, all net. Oh, well, yeah, yeah the, the proceeds, net, the, the, net, proceeds, the, net, the net, net proceeds, exactly. Yes, yes, that's wonderful. Though. And then this so. is actually for you, Susan. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You can tell I fold a lot. <laughs> you never worked at the Gap, right? <laughs> no, no, no. Let's see. Oh, and look at the back. Oh, right, yes. to show the back, the most important thing. You're good. The Childhood Cancer <laughs> Society. Well, thank you so much. Well, I'll, I'll be wearing this at the gym for sure. Thank you. Um, so now let me ask you... Um, I know you organize events, and and how I met you actually was at Equinox, right, you, right, because you were mm -hmm. you were holding some sort. I think you were showing the your products, right, one of know. the raffle events, one of the raffle events, yeah. At uh, so, what other kind of events do you have? Yeah, Equinox has been great. They've uh, shown a lot of support at the local level for my mm -hmm. charity. They allow us to come in there mm -hmm. with the shirts and the teddy bears and just set up and set up a little raffle, and people mm -hmm. come over and they ask, and I get to meet great people like you, Susan. <laughs> Thank you. And um, we've had uh, we've had a lot of different fundraisers. The whole idea started uh, when I when I was sixteen. We did just uh, we started with the sales of the teddy bears. Yes. And uh, those started out great, just like say, high school. Kids, kids are oh, kids are very special. Right, kids are very special. Very, That's our kind of special. our catchphrase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, uh, so we started with like special events at schools, uh, football mm -hmm. games, student dance association events, right? Selling uh, teddy bears, bookmarks, little keychains. And then we evolved. We had our first charity dinner, um, and my my town in Wayne, New Jersey, mm -hmm. and my uh, my town mayor at the time, Scott Romana, came, and my superintendent uh, also came, and it was like a bunch of our board of directors, invited friends, and my mom's friends, and mm -hmm. my school national honor society ah, helped me that's with nice. uh, yeah with the yeah. different intricacies of it and hosting and and uh, serving the uh, the guests. Well, you are a remarkable young man, I, I must say, because from your adversity, what you're doing for those that are following you it's uh, it's pretty amazing it really is Thank now you. you wrote a book yeah. Rudy comes to play on a rainy day yes yes let's talk a little bit about Rudy All I right. understand you have a childhood connection to Rudy I do I do <laughs> when I was uh when I was a little kid, my dad uh, used to kind of. Have you ever seen Liar Liar uh, with Jim Carrey? It's a. Uh, it's you know he can't tell a lie for a day, but he had kind of this cool uh, uh, thing he used to do with his son, the claw, and like whenever uh -huh. his son was in a bad mood, you know the claw would come and like yeah. tickle him or like you know make him laugh. And my dad had a similar thing. It was called Rudy. Mm -hmm. And so if I was ever like kind of down or whatever the case may have been, he would you know all of a sudden like you know like Rudy would come out Rudy of the would woodwork. Come out, and, like, out of nowhere, like all of a sudden like. And then uh, I bet you hated the. Itch Bitsy spider. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, you never spider, know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but it was always great because then, like, it was like a connection my dad and I had, and like whenever uh, you know I was feeling blue, like he would always make me laugh, and mm -hmm. it was really a nice thing. And so when I got a little bit older, um, I thought to myself, you know, that's kind of kind of a cool little story that you know you didn't even realize at the time was a cool relationship to have with your father. Mm -hmm. um, I would definitely have a similar relationship with my son. Mm -hmm. And uh, or daughter. Or daughter. Or daughter. Well, there's also uh, that's the other. <laughs> or daughter. Her partner is uh, Rudina, who Rudina. comes into the story later. You'll see. That's um, right. He has Rudy and Rudina. But uh, right. Yep, exactly. There they are. Exactly. It's a coloring book as I well. I read the book. Okay. Well, then, uh, as you know, it's uh, it's basically a story about a young boy who's having a rainy day, mm -hmm. and uh, these two fictional characters come over, Rudy and Rudina, to uh, to cheer him up, and uh, they, you know they play video games, and they're a lot better at the video games than him because they have multiple limbs, so they're able to mm -hmm. navigate the the Xbox a lot better. And uh, one of the the person who helped me illustrate it, Lindsay Tears, did a great job. Yes, it is. It's a great job. And yeah. uh, I think that the uh, the pictures are fun and mm -hmm. uh, definitely and the stories get the, yeah it's get the point story. across and help get mm -hmm. people uh, mm -hmm. you know kind of at the end of the story you should feel a little bit happier than before you started but what I want to do is I want to read a little note that you have to, you wrote to the parents sure okay? and it's to the parents a child imagination is precious 
As children begin their journey through life, having the ability to use their imagination creates many opportunities. We hope Rudy helps bring laughter and creativity to this journey. Enjoy sharing Rudy and watch your child's imagination grow. Tommy. <laughs> I think that's a great little note to parents because this book is not only for children that are ill. This oh. this book is for, for any child. Any child. I mean, yeah. it's not even... Uh, uh, I mean, it doesn't even focus on illness. It no, just there's focuses nothing on to a do bad with day. illness. Just on a, yeah, I mean, and yeah. any child can sympathize with that uh -huh. where they're having a bad day. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's always ways to cheer yourself up. And that's, uh, that's mm -hmm. an important message. That's the message of my organization. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we have these T-shirts. The, one Great of our other slogans is Good Vibes, the Good Vibes line. Right. And um, we're just constantly trying to think of ways, new and innovative ways to cheer children up, mm -hmm. uh, of course, particularly with cancer. Of course, yeah. Now, you spoke about the prospect of having children of your own. Do you have to worry about, is there a gene that you carry with this disease? You know, I'm not certain. I think, so to my knowledge, I'm the only person in my family who had mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. um, and it could have gone overlooked for people in the past because mm -hmm. of, you know, different, me different medical testing and right. what, what the case may have been. But I don't believe so. Um, ITP is, I mean, I, I suppose it could be passed down, but it's just so rare. What, are, what were your symptoms? What prompted your parents to say, wait a minute, I think, I think we have a problem here? Right. I was, uh, well, I, I did play soccer, and uh, I was bruising very easily. Mm -hmm. um, and then after a while, it started to become noticeably worse bruising than, than most mm -hmm. children my age were having, right. and sometimes bruising for no apparent reason, mm -hmm. like when the season was over. Right. And so my mom and dad, they got me, you know, they, they went and got, we got the blood work, and we were mm -hmm. never expecting for them mm -hmm. to even think leukemia. Oh, of course. My and goodness. so that was like a real big shock and I was really glad to have my family there. Sure. Um, and then after a while, um, we, we got the bone marrow biopsy mm -hmm. and that was kind of where the first idea of giving gifts to kids came into my mind because at the end of my bone marrow biopsy my parents said alright well because you know what they're going to do is you got to explain to a seven year old that they're going to stick a needle in your back that's about this big oh, into your spinal cord mm. and then withdraw fluid and you know at seven years old I was like really? <laughs> I would have been running for the hills <laughs> yeah I was like I don't know maybe you yeah, know, yeah. I'll stay like this thank you <laughs> but they told me uh, at the time I wanted a uh, uh a, a bike with gears uh -huh. and uh, so at the end of it they said you know if you're a good boy you know you get the bike with gears and I'm an only child so okay. maybe I'm a little spoiled but <laughs> the, <think>? idea, <laughs> the idea kind of stuck when I got yeah. a little bit older I thought um, you know that was a nice thing that I remembered I would go you know mm -hmm. I would get the I would get my blood work and sometimes we go to the toy store I get an action figure right. and I was like ah oh, you know it's just a little needle and I would go to the toy Toys R Us you oh, know which is the best place on earth when you're a kid and so I, I thought that that was kind of a uh, a nice thing to do for kids who are starting or completing treatment or kids who aren't expecting it at all. We'll make like three to four trips a year and we'll go into the hospital and we'll just, we'll give toys to everybody. That's wonderful. Or gift certificates. So as the Christmas case all year round. Well, yeah, at least yeah, four times a year. At least four times a year. <laughs> but uh, we believe that this uh, this feeling of unexpected joy is mm -hmm. infinitely beneficial to the, to the healing process. And although it can't be quantified, we notice the results just by, uh, just by seeing the smile on the kids faces. It's I like that. Unexpected joy. I like that. <laughs> Thank That's you. wonderful. Do you ever hear from the parents or the children? Oh, yeah. I have uh, I have little thank you cards and um, you know, of course, I get voicemails and emails mm -hmm. and people people are very happy because they're not, they're not expecting there to be uh, you know, smaller organizations like us who are able to adapt very, who are able to respond rather very quickly mm -hmm. yeah. uh, to different needs, whether it could be for, like I said, gifts or mm -hmm. paying for treatment. Do you have volunteers going into the hospitals to read to the children or play with the children? Yep, I actually, uh, uh, junior year, my National Honor Society, I set up a partnership between them and St. Joseph's Children's Hospital. Is that in and, New Jersey? Uh, yeah. Okay. It's uh, St. Joseph's in Patterson, New Jersey. Um, and for that year, we went in, we read to the kids, mm -hmm. um, and it was really nice. And the kids were very, I mean, when a bunch of juniors in high school are going in to read to kids who are generally between like uh, 7 and 12 years old, mm -hmm. you know, they're like, oh, the cool kids are coming the in cool to hang out with us. The cool kids are coming, you know? yeah, yeah. And so, Marvel candles. Oh, and yeah, back then earrings. my hair was. <laughs> My hair was very long back then, but I thought I was yeah. some rock star. No. <laughs> but you're an actor. 
Well, yes. You did soap operas, right? I was in uh, two epi three episodes of One Life to Live, uh -huh. and I played a different character every time. Our sound engineer, Danny Darrow, is, is a big uh, soap opera star. I, um, I don't remember. He told sounds me. Sounds very familiar. Yeah, he's told me on many occasions what uh, what soap opera he's starred in, but I can't remember. Oh, okay. Crowded, crowded mind syndrome, but. <laughs> I hear you. I hear yeah, you. yeah. But um, do you. Do you find it difficult to stay detached from the illnesses that you see since you were there? Yeah, it is, uh, it is difficult. When I was, um, I used to go and visit much, much more, mm -hmm. but after a while that gets a little bit, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's depressing to see that. And I've of lost course. people too, oh. people that I've gone and seen. Mm -hmm. For instance, there was one patient, he was seven years old, and uh, he had leukemia, and uh, he really likes Spider-Man, and mm -hmm. I was a, I was going to try and surprise him and get the, this. We're going back like four years ago, right? And so uh, Toby Maguire was still the Spider-Man, right? And so I tried to reach out to, to Toby Maguire and to get him to come in, but in the right. meanwhile, I got him a bunch of uh, Spider-Man supplies, coloring books, mm -hmm. uh, action figures, and whatnot. And uh, before I was able to even really get in touch with Toby Maguire's people, uh, he passed. He passed on. Oh, yeah. So that guy has to be so difficult. It yeah, really and, does. And it is. There are a bunch of there are a bunch of patients who who don't make it that that stick in your head no, i'm sure i'm sure now if there are high school or um college uh students out there who want to volunteer from you for you for your organization mm -hmm. in new york or new jersey how do they do that what? well the best way to do that would be to visit our website which would be uh www.childhoodcancersociety.org and uh to send me an email at info at childhoodcancersociety.org mm -hmm. and uh just kind of tell me where you're from and uh you know the type of help that you would look to provide it could be fundraising help or it could be uh visiting the hospital to to bring the kids some joy it could be uh you can come with me to give some gifts out mm -hmm. um it it really varies we have a bunch of different volunteers who provide different uh services to us mm -hmm. whether it be uh we got these uh these shirts initially were donated by uh, a family a friend of mine from school uh mm -hmm. the juriches special thank you to mark, thank mark you. and tyler jurich and okay, the jurich family special thank you okay <laughs> here we go got to show that up again <laughs> That's a great, great uh, shirt. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, the design, like I said, was made by Chelsea Cohen, mm -hmm. who, uh, who's been a big help in this whole thing. She actually is the one who got us involved with the Showtime Network competition, oh. which got us a lot of buzz because mm -hmm. after that competition, like I had said earlier, most of our donations had come, I mean, our uh, requests for donations came through the social workers at hospitals. Mm -hmm. Now we're actually getting a lot through our own website, through the traffic we built ourselves. Mm -hmm. what, what is your relationship with the doctors and the medical staff at the hospitals? I deal mostly with the social workers. I okay. do get to see doctors and they come to like our different fundraising events, mm -hmm. but, um, but mostly I deal with the, with social, the social workers because they have the best uh, relationship with the families. And they know what the families need. And they know what the families need, they know exactly. What the family needs. What's your vision for the Childhood Cancer Society? Well, right now we're, like I said, very small, but my hope is to expand expand upon what we've built here in the tri-state and kind of, and make it on a national level. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned in the book, it is my goal to donate that mm -hmm. book to That's right. uh, every major pediatric oncology facility in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Just a few copies so that people, A, know about us, right. and uh, B, have something nice to read about. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know, my, my girlfriend's uh, son, I believe he's the head of pediatrics at Westchester Hospital, oh. I think the ER, I okay. think so maybe if you need a connection there. Great. More than happy. Uh, Lois, when you watch this, <laughs> talk to Matthew. <laughs> you well, gotta get this you. book in that hospital. <laughs> well, appreciate it. Thank yeah. you, Lois. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, with, with that vision, what, what is your game plan? So, I would like to do the provide the exact same service that we provide now, mm -hmm. but uh, on the national and then maybe one day the global level. Mm -hmm. But uh, we we are currently planning a charity dinner uh, for Manhattan. Our first charity dinner in Manhattan uh, to be probably maybe late late November. Mm -hmm. uh, to for number one, let people know about us in the area, expand our our influence in the area, so that people mm -hmm. know what we do and the type of service we provide and the uh, the volunteer efforts we make, mm -hmm. and then to 
pay for as much medical costs as we can for people who are struggling. I'm sure you know with oh, health care yeah. bills right yes. now. Yes, yeah, yeah. Health insurance is extremely expensive too and treatments, sometimes experimental, are very expensive. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I remember we had uh, one donation where we had to store uh, cord blood for somebody which amounted to something like three thousand mm -hmm. dollars uh, just so that they would later be able to use the stem cells for whatever developments they could right. come up with later for the right. child. It's, it's amazing what you're doing, you know, and when you talked about going global, what, what came to my mind is, you know, helping children that not only have diseases, but children perhaps that are hurt in tsunamis, earthquakes. Oh, sure. You know, that, that just came to my mind when you said, you know, a global organization, because children need help for all sorts of reasons. Oh, sure, sure. But mm -hmm. the thing is, is you really do want to focus on mm -hmm. on uh, one particular issue so that people who, I'm not even just because, obviously, it would be great to help every child. Sure, but, but you can't. But when people, when you, <laughs> you you know, number one, you can't. And when people can't. donate to you, they want to know exactly Specific. where, specifically. Mm -hmm. So we tried to be as specific as possible when, as, even when I was founding the organization, mm -hmm. I was thinking, you know, first I started really broad with like all cancer because cancer is you terrible. Can't, yeah. and I said, you know, there are organizations for for that, and I wanted to be more specific. And this way, when you get the contributions, people know you're helping kids with cancer. Like that's right. pretty specific. Well, what percentage of of your donations go directly to help help the patients? Because you you have to have administration administrative expenses. Right, right. I would yeah. say uh, probably about. 75 to 80 percent. That's very good. Uh, most of our, uh, most of the expenses we have have th or have to do with like inventory mm -hmm. or putting down payments on events or venues. Right, right. Tommy, I cannot believe we're getting cued that we're finished. We're, we're sh we have to wrap up. Which My goodness. I, which I can't believe. I want to thank you so much for coming and I just want to show your shirt again and I want to remind you out there, if you want to volunteer, please contact Tommy Head. They need all the help that they can. Uh, people wise I want to thank you our audience for tuning in if you have a topic you would like us to discuss you can contact me at Susan at BehindTheShadows.com if you've missed any of our episodes you can go onto my website www.BehindTheShadows.com and click on Public Access Television and until next time remember the brightest light shines behind Find the shadows. Thank, Thank you so, you much, so Susan. much, Susan. It's a great show. Great. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank um, you for yeah. having me. My pleasure. You know, so hopefully. I can't believe you. I forgot for a second the smile forever.